Hello and welcome back. In example two, we're asked to find the area of the region that lies inside the circle r equals one and outside the cardioid r equals one minus cosine theta. Just as a reminder, for cardioids, cardioids are where the coefficients in front here, the a and the b, so the coefficient of the uh, constant term and the coefficient in front of cosine, if they're the same or the same but opposite signs, then you have a cardioid. Now again, cosine theta will be aligned along the x-axis, and since there's a negative in front of the cosine theta, then it's going to be oriented along the negative x, uh, the negative x-axis. So again, you can take the uh, theta equals zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, plug them in, and that gives you some points to roughly sketch out your cardioid. Now r equals one is just going to be the circle with radius one centered at the origin, so that's pretty quick to sketch up, in case you don't have figure four already drawn for you. Now our goal is to find this region in between the cardioid, so outside the cardioid, and inside the circle. So between the cardioid and the circle in the first and the fourth quadrants. Let me shade that region a little bit. Just as a reminder, I'm, I'm drawing my lines coming out of the origin. They can't draw them in, uh, inside the cardioid. Okay, maybe this one didn't really come from the origin. Something like that. There we go. So that's the region that we're interested in. I'm drawing right there for good measure. Now you don't have to shade it that way. I'm just doing that as a constant reminder that the region is coming from the origin out to the polar curves. That's what, that's what your regions are looking like. Now to figure this one out, what we could do is we could first come up with the area from the origin to the circle from theta is negative pi over two all the way up to theta equals pi over two. So that would calculate the area of this region of half the circle. I'm just gonna use quick shading for that one. <laughs> and then we could uh, subtract off, so I'll put it minus, the area of uh, the area between the origin and the cardioid from theta equals negative pi over two to theta equals pi over two. That's going to be like this region here. That way, we'll be left with just the shaded region in Figure Four that we that we figured out. That's going to be our goal. Um, now we mentioned that the angles here are theta equals negative pi over two and theta equals pi over two. That's what the start theta value and the end theta value will be to sweep out across either curve uh, from uh, the bottom y-axis to the top y-axis. All right, so let's write up some integrals that are gonna help us find the area of uh, the half the circle and then the area of that part of the cardioid. So here we can take the integral from negative pi over two to pi over two of the circle. So that's one half times r squared. In the case of the circle, r is one. And then d theta minus the integral from negative pi over two to pi over two of the cardioid. So that's one half times the cardioid's r, which is one minus cosine theta, and then squared d theta. So this first integral is the area between uh, the origin and r equals one. This is like your outer curve. Right, that's the, the outer curve of your uh, region. It's the one with the bigger r values. And then the second integral is the area between the origin. Always re want to remember that. It's from the origin to the curve. So the area between the origin and r equals one minus cosine theta. So it's out to the cardioid. And that would be the inner curve of our region. 
So effectively, we're doing like the area of the outer curve minus the area going to the inner curve. We're taking those sectors and we're subtracting them uh, to get what's in between. Now, if you evaluate these integrals and you figure things out, dot, 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 you'll get something like 2 minus pi over 4. So you can check that out for yourself. And I just want to mention a couple of things. One is we didn't really have to go through the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of the circle to get the area of half the circle. We could have uh, just, so for this part, we could have just written 1 half times pi r squared. And that would be OK. That would be the area of the circle. So half area of the, I'll say, the unit circle, because the unit circle is the circle with radius 1. So if you don't have to do an integral, you don't have to do an integral. If you can get away with not using an integral, that's great. The other thing I'll mention is that a common mistake I'll see is when a student will take the uh, theta value down here and write 3 pi over 2. And it's totally uh, a, a mistake that makes sense, right? I mean, after all, that's usually how we think of that angle is, uh, is 3 pi over 2 down here along the negative y direction. But the problem comes when you try to set up your integral. Maybe I'll write this in red. So if you're trying to set up your integral and integrate from the angle of 3 pi over 2 to pi over 2, notice we're always going to be moving um, in the uh, counterclockwise motion, just like when you open up angles, you're always thinking about uh, in the counterclockwise motion. And that's what your intervals of theta are going to be like, right? Because as you move counterclockwise, normally your angles are getting bigger, right? As you, as you move counterclockwise, your angle gets bigger. And so the delta thetas that you compute are going to be positive if you open up your angles counterclockwise. But the problem with setting up the integral this way from 3 pi over 2 to pi over 2 is if you look at that interval of theta values, so just think about this as like um, an interval here of, of values along a number line. The problem is inside that interval are things like pi. But pi is way over here. So if we integrated from 3 pi over 2 to pi over 2, we would actually be going along the third and the second quadrant, not exactly the direction that we want to go. And that's not exactly the interval we really want to talk about. Uh, we want to talk about this interval of theta values on the right side, not the interval of theta values on the left side. So uh, another problem with this is you can, you can kind of see that if you figure out your delta thetas by taking the b minus a divided by the number of subintervals, right? Take your uh, top value, that's b minus a, which is your bottom value, and you divide it by n, the number of subintervals. Uh, well, you're, you're going to get negative delta thetas. So you're going to get some negatively signed integral. So this is really not what we want to have here. Instead, if we let theta go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, well, then your theta values are going to go like negative pi over 2. And as the theta values increase, you're going to get to negative pi over 4. You're going to get to 0. You're going to get to pi over 2. Uh, sorry, pi over 4 and then pi over 2. That's, that interval of theta values from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 is going to sweep out the uh, region that you're interested in. That's going to sweep out the angle, the interval of angle of uh, theta values that you're going to be interested in, the ones that are on the right side there. So I just wanted to point that out. I'm going to erase this <laughs> before it lingers on there too long. So you want to be careful that your theta values are always going counterclockwise as you go from the lower limit to the upper limit. So it's always a small theta value to a big theta value. And you want to make sure as you go from the small theta value to the big theta value, that you're sweeping across the region that you're interested in finding the area of. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next part.